So our existing node setup is a purely procedural workflow. This is all using computer mathematics and everything to create the result, which is all great and it enables us to adjust things later on, it's, it's great. But for the next thing that we want to add is uh, this white bit around our donut, um, where it's been sitting in the fat, but it's like getting less hot fat on the surface maybe, so it's cooking it less. So it's a, it's a white part of it. And there's a number of ways, you know, there's always a hundred ways to skin a cat in Blender. Um, you could do it many different ways. You can make a gradient thing, do it all procedurally as well. But I find the fastest way and actually probably the most, for something like this, like it's, it's kind of like creative and you want to add some variation thing in there. You want to use texture painting. So t Blender has that feature, texture paint, the little workspace at the top there, click that. And this will take you to the texture paint window. Now, if you were to switch here, you can see that our donuts become purple and that's because it needs an image texture to paint into and one does not exist yet. You could create one over here, but really what you need to do for, and because we've already got a node set up already created over here, the best way to do it to make sure that you do it correctly and you haven't lost something um, is to add an image texture and then paint into that when, like basically add an image texture first and then switch to texture paint. So um, right up here, I'm gonna hit shift A, then go input. Is it input? Sorry, texture, texture, image texture. That's, I know what I'm doing, don't worry. Uh, image texture is the one you're looking for. And then I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna plug that into the base color. So I'm gonna override this. In fact, I don't need the color ramp anymore. I'm just gonna keep the uh, noise texture that's going into the bump at the moment. So now that I've got this image texture, there's no image texture added. Um, and no, I'm actually surprised it's, pu it's uh, black now. It used to be purple. Anytime Blender can't find a, an image texture, it would come up as purple. But evidently it's, uh, it's black for some reason. Anyways, uh, you could, if you were to hit the, these two buttons here, um, open will open a texture from your hard drive as we demonstrated in the last part, you could do that. Um, but if you want to paint into something or, or paint something from scratch, you want to hit new. And by the way, this one on the left-hand side here, this will show you any textures that's currently loaded into Blender. Um, I could bring that up as well. So this is the previous reference photo that I loaded into Blender. So it's like temporarily storing it in the background so that I could recall it later on if I wanted. Um, what I wanna click on is new, because I wanna create a new image texture. So I go to hit new, and then when you hit new, you get this like temporary little window pop-up thing. Um, this is where we can change some values of things. The most important thing is the height and width. So this is the resolution of the image texture we're gonna paint into. So obviously the higher res you go, then the more detail you could paint in. Right, so this is, I mean, you won't, you really shouldn't care about this as you're a beginner because you won't know, like depending on what model you're making, like how high res you need to go. But generally like you need to think like how close is the camera gonna be to my object and how like, am I rendering in 4K? Is the camera going really close? Yes, you're gonna need to maybe render in like two or 4K or something as a texture to paint into, right? But if it's something like this, like honestly, you don't, you don't even need this big of an image. That's, that's over. And the reason you don't wanna to go too big of an image is that the higher you go, the longer your render is gonna take because Blender will have to load that texture in um, into the, uh, like the, the memory basically to, to, to render with it. It's also gonna be slower to work with whilst you're creating shaders and everything else. So you wanna to try to keep things light. And for something like this, we really don't need much at all. We don't even need the default, which is usually pretty low. Um, I'm gonna halve this. So, which by the way, I'm just clicking and dragging down so that I can change both of the values at the same time. Um, and I wanna halve it. And the way, the easiest way to halve it is to do the math in the field, which is a cool thing that Blender lets you do. So if I add in forward slash, that's divide by, and then number two, and then I hit enter, it's now halved it basically. So it's now 512. And by the way, why don't you just like type in like 500, like why 512, 512 seems like an odd number. It's one of those like, you know, computer technical things. It's like keeping it to the power of two, I believe. It just makes it easier for it to process and store the information or like render it in the correct space. I don't know. Honestly, I haven't looked into it too much. I've been using Blender for 15 years, but it's best to try to keep it with it. You know, it's like the memory of the computer. It's like 128, 256, 512, 124, etc. You kind of go in that I don't know, maybe the nerds, the nerds just insult you. The mathematical or the computer people, maybe you can reply in the comments what it actually is for. But anyways, just divide it by two. I'm gonna go 512. Now the base color, 
You could change it later on when we actually start painting, but just to make it easier, I'll just do it now. I'll set a sort of a base color of a donut. So something around about a value of a 0.8, saturation of around about a 0.6, something like that. I'll go with that. And then the, the name, which I could also change later, but I'll name it now, donut base. I don't need alpha, and then I'm gonna hit okay. Haha, -ha. so. Um, this, if this is, that color is the same as this color, then it would just be doing, like nothing would have changed right now. Cause this is a solid image texture, which we can't see, right? But if, which we can't, like, I can't show you the image like on this view, but if we click on texture paint mode, um, you could, you should see that it's shown up right here. This, uh, this, uh, when you click to texture paint mode, it should show you by default, this is the properties here. But if you click on active tool there, active tool, which is, is you, it's always just visible, I believe, and it's always the active tool. And because we are in texture paint mode on our object, it's now showing us the texture paint. So it's, it's saying, where are you painting into? And it's painting into our donut base texture. And over here on the left-hand side, you should see the solid color, which is the new image, which we've created. If you can't see it, just select it over here and it should uh, show up. Okay, now if I was to change this color to be something, and just paint, you can see I'm painting onto my model. And you should also see it's showing up on your image texture over there. Okay, now, where is it like, cause the other thing you can do is you can change the, I mean, it's normally automatically set to this, but in my case, it's not. I wanna change to paint mode. And then I could actually paint directly over here as well. So this is again, sort of talking about the image coordinates. So take a texture, and a 2D flat texture and map it onto a 3D model, it has to wrap it in some way according to texture coordinates. Um, so this uh, coordinates that we're using right now is the UV map. So if I was to actually go into edit mode, just go to edit mode right here, you can see these are my my image, whatever, my, my, my mesh, right? And it's created this grid here. So each of these single grids, in fact, if I was to switch, don't do this, I'm just doing it so I can show you. Um, and then go to sync mode, right? If I was to select different parts of this mesh, you can see which parts it actually correlates with on the, uh, the image texture. There's actually a great image um, on Twitter. I'll paste it up here so you can see it, but it's a, uh, yeah, it was like the, the best way to explain UV coordinates to like a, a, a toddler even is like a, Christmas one, like a chocolate of a Christmas, like little Santa thing. It's the exact same thing. It has, it's taking a 2D thing and then it is wrapping it around the, the model. So that is what it is, what it's doing. So we're painting onto a 2D texture, which is then being mapped onto it. So you could paint over here or you could paint onto your model. It's generally much easier to paint onto the model. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. So I will, uh, what view am I in? Yeah, let's go, okay. Image editor, paint mode, and then texture paint mode. Okay, and then this is turned on again. I gotta turn that off. Okay, display. I don't want the image texture. Okay, all right. And then I wanna change the fill, the fill thing. For some reason it sets it as white, I don't know. And then I'll just click, single click, and now I've got my, uh, my donut base there. Solid color base, I mean. All right, now if I was to set this to a white color, and let's go, yeah, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 will be fine. And then I'll set it to kind of like a low strength. And I don't have, I've got a, I've got a Cintiq sitting right next to me, but I will not use it. Because instead I'm gonna click like this, just like you guys are with your little mouse. But obviously if you've got a stylus, um, then it's much better <laughs> because you've got pen pressure. You don't have to do as many clicks. Click, 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 click. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm painting around the middle part and you can see that it's reflected over there. I could also paint across here. I could set my brush strength. And the brush strength, same hotkey as we did with sculpting, it's F to change your, sorry, your size, not strength. Size is F and then strength is Shift F, which is the exact same hotkeys as sculpting, which is nice. It's a nice thing that Blender does. It tries to use the, oh, you see that little thing that just popped up there? That was like a, one of my scripts, my add-ons that I've got enabled just uh, had a fit right then for some reason, I don't know why. But that's third-party add-ons, you know, you get what you get. Sometimes it'll just have a hizzy fit. Um, but, uh, but anyways, yeah, one of the good things about Blender is just like the, the hotkeys are generally consistent, like G for grab and S and scale and rotate. You can even do that, you can do that everywhere, like for nodes, like, yeah, I didn't even show you, but like, yeah, you could, 
like take these and like scale them with S and rotate them. It's like, why would you need to rotate? But like you can, like all of the hotkeys are the same everywhere in Blend. It's really, it's really nice actually that they've done that. Unlike Adobe, looking at you, try and go from like Adobe to Illustrator and it's like, what? Like the pen tools are different and like everything's got a different, ah, oh, it just drove me crazy. Anyways, um, by the way, if you hit X, that is a hotkey from Photoshop. I know I just bad mouthed uh, Adobe, but there's a hotkey from Adobe uh, of Photoshop. It's the same here. We'll just swap between two act, like a foreground and background color. Um, so I want to keep white, but then I want to make this one my donut color. So I'm going to click this, click the eyedropper, click that. And now I could like quickly swap. Like if this part looks too white to me, I can do some brownish painting and then at this part I want to make it white I can just hit x and do that so the reason I'm doing this like sort of staggered thing is this is kind of how it looks I mean that looks like solid white I think that was like a homemade recipe but this one I've, I've just looked in other photos and it seems to be not a constant color that goes all around it it's sort of like it's sort of like splotchy there'll be parts that'll have more um and parts that'll have left less I'm not sure if you can hear but yeah, there's a crow that's just going ape outside. I live, uh, I like rented my, my office, my little studio here. And I, it's just a residential block. And I'm like, I have to make sure there's no like barking dog next door. Cause that'll just like ruin tutorials. And then I'm like, all right, dogs are cool. All right. Everybody seems cool. Okay. I'm going to do it. And then I like move in. Didn't realize that like at odd times throughout the day, it's just the trees around here. You just have birds fighting constantly and just barking at each other. So I just have to deal with it. Or more like you have to deal with it. Um, but I don't even know if you can hear it. It's hard to understand what the microphone will pick up. All right. So that's that's pretty good. All right. Not bad. Cool. We got a, we got a thing. All right. Now, one thing to note is when you do texture painting on a text that you have created in Blender, or you've altered or modified in Blender. You can see that on this image thing up here, you've got a little star. And that star means that this image is not actually saved yet. It's actually, it's it's only visible in your current blend uh, session, right? Temporarily. If you were to actually quit right now, which I'll just do something dangerous and say quit, um, it'll say, do you wanna save your changes first of all for your blend file, but also do you wanna save your modified images? That's a new feature of Blender, by the way. Never used to have that. So it used to be all the time people would paint something in Blender and then they would go, wow, that's loud. They would say, what happened to my texture? Like, I, I, why is it not in the thing? And it's like, yeah, you didn't save it. So you wanna save your texture. So you wanna go save or save as, and it will then say, where do you actually want to, uh, where do you wanna save it? Okay, so let's, uh, let's save it right here. I'll call this, yeah, donut base. Let's do that. And uh, now that little star there has gone. So that means now that if I was to exit, it doesn't matter because this, this thing is, has, has happened. If I was to do another little paint session here, the star has appeared again because it hasn't saved it. So um, the hotkey to save just the image texture, it's Alt S. Do that and it's now saved over the image. All right, so back at my shader over here, I like the way this looks but I want to also use parts of my noise text, which is what I had before, because I wanna have that, whoop, this look, right? Where I've got that kind of uh, browny, white, yellowy parts where it's all kind of like splotchy across it. Like it's been sitting in a fryer, kind of uneven. I feel like the more like commercial, the, uh, cause I've seen, looked at so many donut references, the more commercial the donut operation, the more uniform and plain your donuts will appear. But, if you're like doing homemade donuts or like artisanal donuts, I'm sure that's a thing now, um, you'll get like more interesting shapes and things. So anyways, take that as you will. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna take the output of my noise texture and somehow infuse it with my base, my base colors here. And the way that you do that is in this case, because it is not a, sh if, if you were combining two shaders, which is a whole, you know, shaders, whatever, you, you would do it with a mix shader and you would get two inputs, which is a green. So you would take the green into the green, blah, blah, blah. Um, what we wanna do is combine two yellow, yellow, uh, 
like, like the color of this tells you what sort of information it's it's being uh, transported across. I want to com take this, this grayscale and this, this yellow, which is basically just color information, and I want to combine them. So what I need is another node called a add color mix RGB. So if I take this mix RGB, drop this in right here, um, and then take the output of my factor input and drop this into the bottom input right here. What this will do now is if I if I set the this factor amount here is showing which one do you want to show. If it's all the way to the left, it's showing just the uh, the top input. If it's all the way to the right, it's showing just the bottom input. Okay, and it's it's a simple like opacity slider. It's like if it's in Photoshop and there's a layer above it and you're changing the opacity. That's all it is doing. This mix uh, box type, whatever, that is just like Photoshop, it is a blend type. It's a blending mode, um, which is in invert order for some reason. There we go. Now it's the correct order. Um, and that will take, bas yeah, basically it'll do the exact same thing that it would in Photoshop. So this is an overlay. If I want to take just the dark parts of my bottom input, then multiply is the one that I want. So that way it'll ignore all of the white areas, shader, compilation, <laughs> the downfall of EV. Um, it'll ignore all the white areas and just use the dark values. So now that this bottom input just becomes the dark thing. Uh, the one that I actually want though is overlay. Overlay, similar to multiply, um, but it will also, as well as, as darkening areas, it will also add it. So if you look at just the add one, then it will do the opposite of the multiply. It will not darken, but it will ignore, it'll ignore the dark areas and only use the white areas. So overlay does both kind of. It'll brighten it if it appears brighter than the texture underneath it, and it will darken it if it is darker than the texture underneath it. So the factor input there is like the strength of it really. The strength of how much of this bottom input do you want to add as an overlay thing on top, basically. So all the way to one is way too high. I don't want to go that far, but I want to add some input to it. Um, and in fact, I might change my scale of this to be a little bigger. That looks pretty nice, actually. And my recording just uh, crashed because I ran out of disk space. I should have listened to that notification that popped up. Um, but anyways, it's a matter of uh, just tinkering until you're happy with the result. Uh, it's the joy, the joy of 3D. You can just pull up your reference and, uh, you know, side by side and go, you know, do I want something like that or do I want something like this? And what can I do to try to improve it? Um, but this is a, you know, pretty basic setup, but you can sort of get a feel for now for how nodes work, right? We've got an image texture that's being added with a procedural one combined into a base color. And then that same procedural one is also driving bump. Um, and reading left to right, we can see how our shader is made up of. All these values that don't have anything plugged into them are obviously just values. If I wanted to, I could also make like this roughness. I could take the output of my noise texture and make it apply to my roughness as well. So I would have what looks like, well, we'll see once the shaders compilation finishes. Um, not much actually, but there should be some parts that look kind of like smudges. That's kind of a way to make a smudge map basically. You'll have parts that will uh, look more diffuse, like more diffused, like more matte, and then other parts that'll look glossy. And you could like exaggerate it with a uh, color ramp. I'm sort of getting uh, getting ahead of myself here and just mucking around, but you can see how valuable nodes are and why before nodes, oh, it was tough times back in my day of Blender. There you go. You got what looks like puddles all over your, your donut now, just by making this noise texture go into the roughness thing. You can do a lot with it. Um, but that's it. That'll do it for this part. So go ahead, click on the screen here to join me in the next part of our donut series. And I won't announce it just in case it changes again. I'll see you there.